Hi, Mike McClary here, and welcome to our next lesson, product tuning. And in this video, here's what we're going to cover. What product tuning is and why we need to understand it, how it relates to other physical product business models, how to discover exactly what people do and don't like about all the products that they buy, and then how to take this information and use it for your very first private label product. If you're not familiar with the term product tuning, that's totally fine. It's a new term that we've been using for about the last year or so while improving our businesses and our training. And it's simply the process of making minor changes to an existing product in order to make it stand out and more importantly, better solve our customers' problems. It falls somewhere in between private labeling, which is taking an existing product and just branding it as our own, and product customization, which is making enough changes to a product that it truly becomes a brand new product. It's important to understand that product tuning may not always be viable for your first product because it can take more time and more money, but that's totally okay because private labeling is still easy and very profitable. It's exactly what thousands of us did to get our first product up and running. But the research that we'll be doing during learning how to do product tuning is invaluable and will absolutely make sure that your private label product is as good as it possibly can be. Let's take a quick look and see where private labeling and product tuning falls among the other physical product business models out there. First, we have resale, which is just selling the exact same product under the exact same brand as everyone else. Then there's private labeling, which is selling the similar products, but with your own branding around it. Product tuning is then taking that and making some small minor changes to improve the customer experience. Product customization can involve creating your own mold, which is actually what products are made in, and then adding features to it. And then invention is creating a brand new product that never existed before. The one thing to keep in mind is that when we go from the left to the right, the costs, the profit margins, and the level of complexity all go up. For example, getting involved in resale can be very easy and cheap to get into. However, the profit margins are incredibly low that you'll never make any significant income. And inventing can be very profitable, but it'll take years and years to get your money back. And it's very complex and would be very expensive to get involved in. So what does that mean for us? Well, fortunately, we've been doing this for a while and we knew exactly the best models for people looking to start their own business and start making significant income quickly. And that is private label and then product tuning. These are truly the ASM sweet spots and have the best return on our investment in both time and money. In order to perform product tuning, we actually have to know what customers do and don't like and how to best solve their problems. So how do we do that? It's actually very simple. Amazon gives us that in the form of product reviews. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's hop on over and start checking out some of the product reviews for the products in our hot opportunity list. Okay, so here we are in our product opportunity spreadsheet, and we're gonna pull up a few of our top product opportunities and take a look at their reviews to see what customers do and do not like. So let's start off with the mini clothing steamer. I'm gonna pull it up here. Now, a way to easily see the positive and negative reviews is to click on the total number of reviews. And then you don't have a real good way here yet of filtering or sorting, but if you go down and click on the most recent customer review, then you will see the sort by and the filter by. And what we wanna do is first filter by all critical reviews. That's only gonna pull up those that are a one, two, or three star. And that way you can kind of see grouped together what customers are having problems with. All right, so let's quickly read through here. Uh, Mandalina thought that it smelled kind of moldy and looked used. They might ask for an exchange. No, nothing else yet. Uh, let's see, this person used it starting in November 2016, only used it four times and it stopped working. Little green light won't come on. Uh, was not hot and there was uh, not very hot and didn't have much steam. So we're seeing a couple things here, but it's important to note that just because you see a handful of customers with issues, that doesn't mean that there's an overarching problem with the product itself. Almost every product out there has between a one and 2% defect rate. That's industry standard. And that simply means that when products are made, either the quality control missed a few things or during shipping, something was damaged. And that's normal. So we're always going to see a few negative reviews due to product defects. So a few defects are nothing to be concerned about, but if we start seeing a large percentage of them with the exact same issue, that's where we'd wanna put something into the spreadsheet showing that there's a possibility of improving the quality control. So let's keep going down and see if we start seeing any themes. All right, so this person here, first we used it, um, steam came on for 10 seconds, then shut off. All right, so it definitely is having some issues there. Uh, down here again, 
steam lasts only 10 or 15 seconds before it shut off. So we're seeing the same issue at least twice in a row very recently, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and see if I see that same thing on anything else. Uh, here's one with a uh, small water storage capacity. Uh, I'm going to go to the next ones too before I start writing down anything. Uh, let's see, stop working after a few issues. Okay, so then we had like three people that had the same issue with it stopped working. Uh, let's see, this one uh, again, nothing real negative here. Water depletes quickly, so that's another one for the small water tank. Uh, here's one about the cord being short and the water spitting out. Alrighty, nice compact design. Let's see, the cord is too short. Okay, so we found a couple things that are common here. So let's go over there and write these down. We'll make a note in this cell right here. We saw a couple people say, so on the cons, uh, short cord, small water capacity. And uh, let's see, so quality issues. So those are three things that we would be able to potentially address. Uh, maybe not initially in the very first product that we were to source if this was our one, but we could you know, try to see if the supplier would have a longer cord, ask them how long their current cord is, and maybe that's something that would be easy to do even right now. Also for later on, maybe we have another model that has a larger water capacity. And then one thing we could definitely talk with our current supplier with once we find them is about how they handle quality issues. How many do they sample and what do they do? What are their policies on defects? So these are some good um, piece of information that we're getting from customers about what they don't like. Now let's go take a look at what customers do like. So I'm gonna go up here again, and instead of filtering on critical, let's filter on the positive ones, so all the four and five stars. Uh, and in general, just let's see, can't beat the price, works like a champ, so they like the price. Uh, fantastic product, I'm gonna keep going down here. Worked really well. Um, heats up almost immediately. An uh, auto shot off after 30 seconds of non-use. Uh, let's see, again, uh, they're really liking how it works. Uh, this one, it comes with a detachable brush and storage bag. That's very good information to have because perhaps if we were trying to compete with this product, we would need to at least have the brush and storage bag and we're the exact true product. So let's go add that in. One of the pros comes with brush and storage bag. And let's continue on down looking for more things over here. Compact, convenient, people like the size heats up fast. Uh, that's the second one we saw of that. So let's put that down also. Heats up fast. And I'm going to go over and look for some more positive ones. Uh, looks like this person had an issue, but the customer service took care of it. That's great. Uh, right, so I'm not seeing anything uh, doesn't spit water. You know, let's go take a quick look at the listing also just to get some more ideas. Yeah, I thought I saw this. So one of the things that they're calling out that this doesn't spit water. So even though we saw a few reviews that might have said that it did, uh, looks like that's one of the things they focused on, making sure it's a steamer that doesn't spit water out and mess up while steaming. Uh, quick and powerful, so it heats up quickly and it's strong. And of course they have their satisfaction guarantee. So these are, um, you know, so let's also put in the fact that it's, we wanna make sure that it doesn't spit water. That's something people are concerned about. So. Heats up fast and finally doesn't spit water. So there we have some good items to look at as far as when we're dealing with our supplier, things we want to make sure that it doesn't do, we want to make sure that you know they don't have any quality issues. And then we also want to make sure that it has, um, you know, it heats up fast, it doesn't spit water. So when we're dealing with supplier and we start communicating with them, we want to make sure, especially when we're looking at our samples, we want to test out and look for these features. Did the sample we have have a long enough cord? Uh, did the sample have a brush or storage bag or that's something that we need to ask them to provide? Did the sample heat up fast enough? These are all great things to use during our product research and looking at the samples and also maybe coming up with future iterations of this product down the road. Now I'll close that out and let's go take a look at another one. I think I'm gonna look at the light box tracer. Okay, so let's go take a look at the reviews again. I'm going to click on the top most recent one so I can get to the sorting and filtering. Then I'm going to filter on the critical ones. So let's see, okay, uh, as described, not bright enough though. Okay, go down here. This one, uh, the USB cord didn't work. 
uh, down here, the light drastically dims initially. Okay, so some brightness issues. Uh, half the box is black dots. They didn't like that checkered effect. Uh, cord didn't work down here. Okay, so again, then some cord issues. And um, they found the pattern of the LED lights in the box distracting. Let's add those before we think of anything else. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to insert a note. So on the cons, we have uh, cord issues. Also brightness issues and I think they believe they didn't like the dots on screen and let's continue on all right I don't really, uh, another one saying the checkered pattern that comes from the light um, again that's the uh, that someone else mentioned they didn't like the the way the tiny LED lights, LED lights lit up so okay um, it's lightweight that's good screen is pixelated okay so that's definitely one of the things that people aren't liking on this version um, you know what? Let's take a quick look at their comment here. We're sorry that you didn't like the expectation that it's pixelated. It's actually a laser dot. Oh, look at this. They have another replacement, another model that doesn't have the same issue. Let's go look and see what they did here. I'm going to pull up that. Ah, so this is another model. So this one is the A4 and it costs $23.89. The one that we were looking at, I'm going to scroll up, costs $20.56. So here's what they've done already. They, the, they say the light here is stepless. I think that's what they mean is it's not pixelated as in this previous model. So what they've already done, they found out that customers didn't like the fact that the light was pixelated and they've already come out with another version of the product, which is great. Uh, they're doing exactly what we're talking about here uh, through product tuning and maybe this is be product customization. They're creating a better model. Doesn't mean they're stopped selling this one. People still like it. Still has a, you know, a lot of great reviews, 171 reviews, but they have recently launched a newer one that's a better and looks and costs a little more. Let's continue down and looking at more reviews. Um, let's go down and look at the negative ones a little more. Um, no cord, all right, did not come with a cord. US cable didn't work out of the box. Okay, the same issue we had before. All right, decent box, missing pieces, work great. Light's not bright enough, the same thing. All right, again, someone else not liking the checked pattern. Uh, USB port was rusty, let's see. Um, okay, so far we've covered everything on here, really. Now let's take a look at the positive reviews. Okay, five stars, great for tracing. Uh, let's see, super thin, that's positive. People like it. it's thin and it's, uh, let's see, controls are simple. Uh, the USB cord is long, that's, that's kind of nice. They have a long enough cord. The previous product had a short cord, this one has a long one, that's good to know. All right, love it, space saving, light box terrific. Um, just lots of good things about it. Um, thin and portable, let's add that in. That's definitely something people are liking about this. Thin, I saw light, portable. So these are the pros. And also we saw that they have a long USB cord. That's a good option to know about. Let's continue going down. All right, so uh, I think that's pretty much all that we need to cover here. So this had some cons on it. They had some cord issues, probably quality control. Maybe we need to make sure our supplier has a decent USB cord, uh, some brightness issues where it's too dim, and then people didn't like the dots on the screen, which they took care of with coming up with a newer model. On the pros, it was thin, lightweight, portable, and a long USB cord. So an example here being when we're sourcing this product, we also wanna make sure we check with the supplier about the length of the USB cord. Because if we're competing with this customer, this product, we don't wanna offer a shorter cord that would might potentially make some customers unhappy when they're comparing it to our product. So now that you've seen how product tuning research takes place, it's time to take action. I want you to go through your top three product opportunities and determine what the customers do and do not like by looking at the reviews just like we did. Then I want you to make note of those on your product opportunity spreadsheet. We're going to use this information when selecting our final product and supplier. The goal is for our final private label product to cover as many of the customer likes and dislikes as possible without having to have the supplier make any costly changes in both time or money. In future products, however, we can use the exact same information that we've gathered to either improve our existing product or even create new ones through product tuning. And once you've done that, 
Then you can head over to the very next lesson. We're going to learn how to use our simple sourcing system that'll show you how to source products from anywhere in the world. Thanks, and I'll see you there.